Hi, welcome to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. Appreciate it. Shout out to Cuppy last night for her super chat. She's a long time viewer back in the Kenny Beach days. Okay. Still working on a custom emoji in the background. Try and find the best version for it because I think it's definitely needed in recent time. We'll talk more about that in a second. So today we're going to be looking at Lucin Pond, the latest footage of the area, boots on ground. I know a fair few of you would have seen it, obviously, on Ty Corbin's channel. What I want to do today is just show a little clip of it to compare and contrast to what it looked like seven months ago by Scott Natal, who went there. Okay, we see how vastly it's changed. I might not be able to do a direct side-by-side -side comparison because of the angling, but I'm sure we can play the footage in a certain order. Then I'll go through my opinions, my analysis of the latest photos of Lucent and why it looks how it how it does. Um, you know, tiny impossibilities with recent evidence found, you know, all that stuff. There's no harm in talking about it, the discussion points. And of course, in the live chat, people can share their thoughts, opinions and reactions as we do go along. Okay. But yeah. If you didn't watch my previous video, feel free to check that one out. It's kind of an important one, okay? It's covering the latest updates provided by Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds, analysing that, and also clearing up confusion about two suspects within this case, considering Candice Cooley has only said there's only one in recent time. That video will help clear it up for you, right? So, regarding last night, there was more chaos than usual, if you want to call it that. Um, once again, doesn't always happen, so it's not the end of the world. If it was a live call-in, a live stream interview or something, it'd be significantly worse. It'd be more verbal, it would put people off, and it would just go wrong. But that didn't happen, of course, it's obvious. Um, you can argue it's from a certain crowd of boisterous people, right? I mean, let's not bullshit. You get a certain crowd that comes on in with their opinions, their thoughts, their experiences. And when there's disagreements, that's when the tension, friction and drama starts. So whilst people, you know, just in general can say, oh, drama, drama, oh, drama, drama. You got to ask yourself at the beginning, what caused it? Differing opinions, that's simply it. If everyone thinks the same, then there's no drama. But is that practical? Is that natural? No, it is what it is, right? Obvious, unless you start brainwashing everyone, like maybe what other channels have done out there, but different story that. So it'll probably ease, fade out, all that noise once again. I mean, just to try and understand it, I think it was to do more with Kurt Wadsworth, right? Kurt, you, you had viewers last night, some of them, that were defending Kurt Wadsworth, saying he's innocent. He's not dodgy, he's not suspicious, he doesn't have to take a lie detector test to prove it to anyone, he's okay, he's good, he's consistent in everything he says, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, but a lot of people I've come across, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot, the majority, have criticised Kurt, have said he's lied, have said he's switched and changed information several times, which doesn't help, right? Is there any way of trying to understand that? Maybe they're on the outside? Because you think about it, the people that were present last night, they've come from Pancake's channel, right? Even Stoney, although Stoney um, is, a, is a good person, at least towards me, she came from Pancake's channel as well, right? Just making observations. But put Stoney aside, the others that have come on in, because they've been around Pancake's, they would have learned certain things about the case from a certain angle, point of view, as well as in the presence of Kurt Wadsworth himself because of the live call-ins and interviews. So the reason why those lot are defending Kurt Wadsworth is because they've listened to him directly, right? And may have been in little one-on-one um, -on -one conversations as well. So they may know more about, uh, about him than other people do who are on the outside, possibly. But this is what you've got to understand and where hypocrisy pops... Uh, possibly pops in, right? You got Doug from mm, No Thanks. People call him out, people criticise him. He's working or assisting with Candice Cooley. Candice Cooley obviously being criticised by all different people, witch hunts and everything, right? Doug defends and supports Candice Cooley, saying she's innocent, she's a good person, she cares about Dylan, etc, etc. 
And this is where certain people around, including those who we're talking about, who may be on Pancake Channel, might disagree. Then there's tension and then start calling out Doug or more specifically Candice Killian saying, yeah, but she's not innocent. She's not innocent. She is bad. She's done this. She's done that. And then Doug will say no. And the reason why he's saying no is because he's in the presence of Candice Cooley. Just like how these pancake viewers are in the presence of Kurt Wadsworth at a certain point in time. So they're going to defend him. Just like how Doug defends Candice Cooley, right? But they could all be dodgy in some way or another. Or have little slip-ups and moments, right? That's, that's where you need to be in the middle, balanced. If you're able to hear it from both sides, good. If you can only hear it from one side then listen, but don't go all in on that because then it'll be imbalanced. This is what we're seeing, right? Strong opinions, okay? Even like last night, right? Very small scale. Um, just Eddie, steady Eddie, fast Eddie, Eddie Guerrero, I don't know. The guy with the, the moustache, sorry, the one that was riding that horse in that motel photo, you remember, who needs his exhaust pipe checked out. He said... Uh, about the the gun was never inside Dylan's truck. It remained in the trailer and it was never returned because it was never taken away. And the way he worded it at first, it was like, it's a fact. That's exactly what's happened. He didn't say, in my opinion, or from what I know of, from what I have heard. Didn't quite word it like that. And then once I asked, right, where did you hear it from? Where did you hear it from? And he said something like, oh, it's just my opinion. I'm just basing it off common sense. Da, 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 da. And it's like, so it's not 100% definite. And then he said, well, it's common sense. It's, it's just going to happen. No, 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 no. When you've got a case like this, when you have characters as well, where things don't quite make sense at times, where things can be a complete disaster, common sense sometimes is knocked out of there, right, unfortunately. If it's 100% confirmed, it's 100% confirmed. If it's not, then it's just like an opinion, a theory, an idea. And as long as, as it can be addressed as that clearly, in terms of language and wording, then it's fine. But when people start wording it differently, poorly, it makes you stop for a second and think, wait, are they saying it as a fact? Are they saying that's exactly what's happened? You know, you see me say, and people can say, oh, why do you keep saying from what Candice Cooley has said? From what Candice Cooley has said? From what... Um, Someone else has said, it's like, because that's where it came from. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but that's what they have said. That's what's been suggested. That's what's been talked about, you know? We could just talk very vaguely and then we'll get absolutely nowhere and be completely fucked and screwed. We're not doing that, okay? So once again, language, wording is necessary. Because if it's done incorrectly, it causes confusion, right? And in a way, as for these different opinions, which is then causing the tension and then the drama, that's all down to language and wording because of text-based or even verbal, if it's elsewhere on other channels, right? Very simple, okay? Will we get as much tension resistance tonight? No, no. I mean, this is the thing, what you got to understand. Some videos which are more bigger and more hard-hitting or attract the right people, if you had the facts wrong that there's no other channels doing a live stream at that time, then they'll all gather here, okay? That's just how it works. It's like Noah's Ark. They all step on in, okay? If you have moments where there's other channels present, then it will filter out some humans, okay? Just how it is. So let's just put that aside for now because uh, we don't really need to talk anymore. Welcome if you're currently here. What we're going to do now is move on to the footage. Um, I don't know in which order you want it. Do we show the, the most recent footage now or Scott et al's? I guess it just makes more sense to do it in the correct order, okay? First of all, I'm just going to play to you a small portion of Scott Natal's footage of Lucin Pond seven months ago when he went out there, and then we'll stop it, talk if needed, then transition on to the after, okay? And what I want to say now, before I forget, not... Not For You, I think that's their name, the one with the teardrop eye uh, American flag profile picture, whoever that truly is. They confirmed just recently, last night, that when Ty went out there, it was the, it was done in February. I'm not sure what day exactly, but February. So post um, 
January of when the pond was drained and uh, dug again. So let's move on to Scott Natal's footage and see what it looked like. Got this gate right here, it's locked, but there's a little walkway. You can walk in here and check it out. Kind of cool. was a building at one time. Can't see. Oh, there's a little bunker over there. A little tunnel. Tree tunnel. Look at this tree. Holy moly. It is huge. Big trees around here. They look like, uh, might be Chinese elm. There's the little pond. Right, so as you saw that footage, I mean, you gotta take in mind the weather, the season, that does play a factor as well, such as vegetation growth and the color of it, right? And maybe water quality to an extent. Um, have you heard any strange sounds in the background? Maybe it was the odd camera noise or movement, but as well, it sounded like there was a bird present in the area, that squawking, okay? It wasn't Bella V this time round. Uh, does anyone know what type of bird it was? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, Jenny, interesting thing what I noticed was when Scott Natal just casually said, oh, there's a bunker over there. Is that true? Is there a bunker in Lucin? Or was Scott Natal wording it in a different way? Let me know your thoughts, okay? Because... You know, you just saw a bunker there, that would be of interest as well. I don't know if it was explored, if it does exist, or if it's meant for something else, but I'm sure you can give your thoughts down below. But, you know, if you're just looking visually at the area, you see the row of trees that go down the path, and there's a few of us scattered about. it has got the canopies going over you. In some areas, it feels enclosed. It's shaded as well, so I guess it's a bit cooler in those areas. Um... As for the trees, you know, you saw some of them, and as described by him, very big, very thick, the trunk area, very wide. I don't know how old the trees are. If anyone does know, feel free to say. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes back to, like, when they were talking about the railroad community, and even back then, right? That wouldn't surprise me. The pond itself, when you look at it, kind of looks similar to when Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly visited one month later. Okay, that's the order. I wanted to use the oldest bit of footage that's relevant to the Dylan Rounds case. Okay, that's why I did that. The water, the vegetation has not changed from um, when Scott went to when a month later uh, Lance went in Thai. Okay, but when you're looking at the water then, and as described by pancakes in the past, it looks very murky. It kind of looks like a swamp, right? But that's because of the greenery, right? It being enclosed, right? Whereas if you look at it nowadays, especially most recently, it looks very clear. Um, no green algae, none of that collected, right? But then again, maybe it's the season, maybe because it's been cleared, drenched, dredged, and etc., etc., right? Um, is there anything else to highlight, bring up? All I'll say is, 
is I'll play to you the latest footage in a second, which was from February 2023, okay, by Ty Corbin. It's just taking mind that because of the weather, you're not going to get as much vegetation, not as much greenery, of course. And also take in mind because of activity by humans clearing the area, investigating, it's going to probably look drastically different. But let's just run the footage now and then, you know, you can give your thoughts. Well, this has changed a lot. I can see where a cat's been in here. All the trees have been knocked down. Not very good conditions for searching at all. So they definitely have done something here. slower sorry so none of this was like this the last time I was here which was I think early December or late November yeah they've removed a lot of the trees on this side of the pond too as you can see okay so what you've seen on screen is actually the end part of ty corbin's video when he's basically walking back the way he first came okay but i just wanted to provide this point of view because this what you see is the sign what scott natal was first reading in his video he was just on the other side of that gate that fence supposedly it's locked so he had to go through some like little style or fitting there where that wood is okay or was it this one? Might have been this one. Whichever one it was, okay? So Ty Cobbins just going that way, the way Scott and Tal came through, okay? Do you see, you know, like the entrance point? And obviously, from the looks of it, we can tie back to that in a second. Now, we move on. This is looking back, right? So that's exiting, and that's looking back the other way as you're approaching the pond. It's a little bit dark, the imagery. That's just down to uh, the lighting, uh, the video and stuff. But we do have a before and after shot, a rough one where I've increased the brightness a little bit, maybe, I think. But you can see, you can still see the snow. Um, but such as here on the ground level, it's not. It seems like it's been cleared away. But of course, with vehicles passing through, it makes sense. And as you see on the ground, as described by Ty Corbin, this is where like the excavator or the bobcat went through. Hopefully you can see the track marks. Can you see them? Probably worse zooming in, but I can see track marks. Not massive track marks, to be honest, and not that deep, but maybe that's because of the ground being somewhat hard. But hopefully you can see those track marks, okay? So they, would have come through that gate. Makes sense. It's wide enough. No no point knocking down a fence to drive through, just use that gate. Okay. Move on to the next image. This is looking at it from the, the left hand side. So if you look over this way, get off your twat in that image. You can still see the track marks on the ground. But what appears to be is they've done like a circular, like a radius around the pond. They've gone all around clearing the ground and any vegetation nearby. Interesting. So it's, instead of just going to one side of the pond to begin doing what they're doing, they've gone all the way around from the looks of it. Now, what's the reason behind that? Why did they have to go up that way to clear up there? Is there a reason? Is that because that's where that pipe is? Over that way. Move on to this image. This is looking the other way on the right hand side. Over in that distance you can see the snow. Um, does anyone know what that is? Is that just like a little storage box? It looks wooden. And then you've got the fence that goes around. Does anyone know what that is? Back there. It looks like a cylinder with a tip, a point. 
And the only other thing to highlight is, you see this like small mountain over that way? That's, I, I think it was more to do with around that area down there, at the base of that mountain. That's where I was suggesting where Don Haitley's trailer was at. As said, still trying to figure it out, okay? It probably sounds a bit pathetic, but it, that's not my problem. I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of it without having coordinates. So I was looking over that way. I know Ty Corbin said it's like a mile west, west of the pond. And it was kind of west, but it was a bit more um, um, east-west. I can't remember how I was describing it, because I'm looking at it from different angles. But it looked like it was over that way. And then obviously over there, you've got the, the, like, the mountain, the borders, which goes all the way down. You can see there's a fair bit of snow. Is it very thick and deep? Not really, to be honest. But the ground's going to be hard, and that's not practical. Then we've got another image there. Once again, it's very dark, unfortunately, but there's not much you can do about that. But that I think that's kind of the same way Scott Natal walked. When you saw all the trees and you saw the canopies, you saw the greenery. But now you can just see straight ahead across the field. You haven't got that cover anymore. This part here, what's going on with this tree? Like a big hole in it, as you see there. What's happened there? Has it been has it been pulled off, cut off? Why? Is it a branch? Big branch? It's created a big crater within it. Is it because it was sticking out, so it was obstructing the view? It uh, the vehicles couldn't pass under, pass underneath it, so they had to cut the branch down. Maybe. Hmm. Because like, part of the tree is still standing, but what good does it do to that tree? Probably not a lot with that massive hole inside of it. It's just going to die. If not, it's already dead, right? You still have some trees in the background still developed and still there, but mm, it's definitely been more exposed now. As you can see, you can just get right onto the pond area there. Of course, we can do a before and after of this. You look at that, once again, it's just ice. A layer, a sheet of ice, so of course freezes up very quickly. Mm -hmm. In the background, you got some wood beams around the edge of it, because that's just to support it. But yeah, that water, frozen. Does it look clear? I mean, it's because it's ice, that, like, that clear sheeting of ice. The water underneath... Um, the water underneath though would be cleaner than what it was previous because of it being drained, because it's been, you know, searched about and stuff. And then just before that, if you look round to the right, you got this like dirt mound collected there with what looks to be stones and some white stuff. That tree's knackered itself, little bushes that have just messed up. Hmm. Bit of a mess, to be honest. Yeah, move on to the next image. This is the only question I have. Okay, what are those two blue poles? Metal. Does anyone know what those two poles are? Why have they been shoved into the ground? Has that got anything to do with the search? That took place by uh, Ellie. Let me know if you know in the chat, okay? And then this was the area Ty Corbin said looks like was uh, dug up. And from the looks of it, yeah, it seems to be because the track marks follow down to this point. The trees have been obviously cut back here because that's where they need access, the key access point. If I'm correct in saying, over there, that's west. And that's where the uh, pipe is that comes out, where the water fills up this pond. You'll see like a little ring or something on the, the ground, the base of it, because that's where the the water's at. And then the rest of it is all ice. We'll, we'll have a look at that up close shortly, so you get a better idea. But there is another pipe here. Can you see? So, if anyone can... Um, answer the question 
How many pipes does Lucin Pond have? I've seen the one on the west side, but what about this one here? What pipe is this? More water? Does water come out of it? You know, what's the situation? And as you see, it looks like it's been exposed, maybe. If there's been like digging taking place nearby, it's not covered anymore. Interesting. The ground is somewhat smooth, but it would have been it would have been compacted by the equipment. There you go. That's what I was talking about on the west side. You can see that ice, can't you? Forming around. So even where there's no ice, the water does look kind of clean. Obviously not ultra clean because you can't see right through, but cleaner than what it was. What's that down there? I can't quite see what that is. And then the pipes lower down there, which you can't see. And obviously because of this flowing water, Ty Corbin said it would take longer to fill back up, but because of this flowing water here, that's what's causing the ice to melt because of a constant flow of water landing on the ice, which will eventually break it up. Hence why you see it here. Okay. Now we've got a little before and after shot. Okay. Take in mind, the camera angles are completely different, but it's of the same area, just a different angle. And when I say of the same area, I mean the same pond. Okay. Because I know in the past... When it came to Kenny Beach and the M Cave, or the mine shaft, fucking degenerates were saying it's two completely different spots, two different locations, and it's like, I think you need to find your marbles, okay? So, as we see on screen, you do notice there's a big difference. I mean, vegetation, first of all, um, to be fair, those trees there, at the back of that pond, are those trees over that way on Scott's footage, okay? So they've not really changed too much. I mean, there's a few stumps, right? It's just mainly on one side where it's been really cleared and decimated, but that's that's for obvious reasons. But you're looking at the water itself, the colouring of it. Both give off reflection, so they're not ultra clean, but there's a, there's like a lot more bits and bobs in like greenery, algae formed, as you see over there. And you'll see it in Lance's footage as well a month later. Whereas here, you don't really notice it. That's because of the, the ice as well. That does conceal it. But when we looked at the west side where the pipe was and you looked at the water uh, where it wasn't frozen over, that water didn't look green or anything like that. Also, it could be the, the time of the season as well, the weather, all those different factors you take in mind. But you can clearly see there is a difference visually, at least. And then we move on to the next one. Once again, the camera angle isn't the best, but they did come the same way, right? Walking down. On the left, you see it's very bushy, very green. It's just very compact, isn't it? You can't see through. You don't know what's through there. But then on the right-hand side, despite the, uh, the brightness being dark, you can see through. You can see the light coming through. You can see the water partially. But on the left, you can't. So there's been... Um, a big change up, don't you think? Let me know your thoughts down below. So I think we can all agree on one thing at least, that they do look very different. The, the photos before and after, there's clearly been a search. Extensive enough? We'd hope so, right? Okay, in the past, that might have drained a pond, and recently, once again, they've drained the pond, okay? There's only so much you can do, I guess. All I do say is, that dirt and the dirt mounds, what you see, scattered nearby is that from just the ground literally right near the pond or the dirt that's been scraped out of the pond do you know like if you're dredging it let me know your thoughts because there can be silt there can be dirt vegetation which is rotted died down which can collect at the bottom of a pond and sometimes you need to scrape that away and it can reveal stuff as well but it looked like there's a few stones so i don't know where they exactly came from um just a very random observation or acknowledgement. There was a time in the past where when we looked at the uh, footage before, and well, not before and after, when, when we were going back in time with the pond and we went back to 2013, 2016, 2020, remember that? And it didn't really change that drastic, right? So it's been somewhat at a constant, but then suddenly by humans, it's disrupted. In this case, I guess, for obvious reasons. Do you feel 
there was unnecessary, I don't want to sound like a do-gooder, I don't know how else to word it. Do you think there was unnecessary damage done to the nature of the area or you think what was done was done and it's fine? I just want to know your thoughts randomly. I mean, does it impact any wildlife, any of that? I mean, if it's a point, point where animals go, whether it be birds, nesting, I don't know, that could be disrupted, whether it be other animal wildlife going there when it's uh, shaded, uh, during when it's hot, you, you haven't got the trees there as much, and the vegetation, it'll impact them as well. But, you know, you get these knock-on effects at times, and sometimes you can't avoid them, other times you can, but, you know, it's just one of those things, okay? Um, really, is there anything else to conclude with? I mean, like, you can see the track marks, you can see there's been activity, you can see uh, where they've gone and exactly where they've entered the access point. I do feel it's a bit coincidental how you had that and then within time you had the new evidence found, whatever it may be, right? And I did see a comment last night where some people were saying, so what, who cares about this new evidence? It's not finding Dylan or it hasn't found Dylan yet. And it's like, well, this is the thing. Considering the case has gone on so, so long, it's just a miracle, in a way, that they're able to still find evidence, like now. You know what I'm saying? I know you could argue, well, maybe all of this evidence, despite it being stretched out, could have all been found in the first week, maybe. But I guess we won't know because we can't run through that simulation, right? But, you know, end of the day... Evidence can help build a case or can reinforce certain points, so you might as well welcome and accept all evidence possible, regardless of how important it is, it's evidence, right? It could it could come in uh, use at some point. Um, I just think, whilst the coverage of the case continues, more of the physical search efforts have quietened down, not just because the land's doing his other stuff with the, the dog training, but... The weather itself, as described by Kenny's Cooley, Justin, and even Ty, I guess, restricted. Does it apply to Scott Natal as well? Possibly. Not really seen many videos by him. Um, saw some short clips of him driving on the highway where it was very slushy and icy. So, you see, it has a knock-on effect with all different areas nearby and further afar, right? I mean, when it came to the Kenny Beach case, the weather wasn't as much of an issue because not Everyone was going every single day, you know. It was further out, it was more demanding, and it was more allocated time slots, or at least slots to weather. And I'll be honest, I think at some point I might do a bit more Kenny Veach coverage, if, if I can, if I've got time and there's material. There's a lot of factors to take in mind, but um, just could it be a bit more refreshing. I'll, I'll tell you something, and I don't know if I'll do a singular video on this, maybe just to spread a bit of awareness, but with the EWU crew, popping back up, I guess, in recent time, I guess. It was actually good to watch the video. It felt weird. Like, it feels... I do watch videos on YouTube, quite a few of them, but the actual stuff I might cover or interested in, I don't always watch because there isn't time to watch it. I'm making it. Does that make sense? So when I do finally watch a video, it's like, this is weird. Because I'm not saying that I should be making their videos or, like, I'm doing exactly what they're doing, but just because um, I've not editing, you know, all that fucking shit, you can see it's fucking fucked up my brain, hasn't it? I can't even get a fucking sentence out all of a sudden, is what I mean, like refresh, and then it will help, because I think what needs to be done, just in general, just like general acknowledgement that to be covering the Dylan Rounds case almost every day, day in, day out, for over seven months or something, over 220 videos on the case. That's not normal. That is not normal. And to be able to think of coverage every single day, think of material, think of ideas, think of valid stuff. That's the most important part. Valid stuff on a consistent basis. That's just not normal, right? But it's doable. So there's no harm in doing it. And there is still quite a few videos to cover, right? But they might be quite short, but they're more focused and more locked in, which is a positive, right? So before people give a big sigh, oh, this video's short, oh, this video's not long enough, I prefer it longer. Well, oh well, tough shit. 
you'll get short videos here and there because it's necessary and it's clear. You don't want confusion, no. The discussion videos are the best, are the most efficient when it comes to length and being able to talk for a certain length of time in the live chat, of course, but they're not the hardest hitting videos, but they're good in between for just creating a bit of noise and const constancy on the case. The more focused, dedicated stuff tends to be shorter and some significantly shorter because it's looking at just one thing, right? But each one has its positives and negatives, okay? Is there any other comments, observations to make notes of other YouTubers out there, other people covering the case? Not really. It has quietened off and it will continue. But I do feel when the weather improves, you might get a short burst, a short spell. Is there any other background stuff going on? Any other locations that need to be looked at? Feel free to list it down below and it's possible to view, look at or analyse, then I'll try and do so with the maps. All I want to do now, which I didn't do at the start, so that's a first, is to take a look at the comment section of the last video, just to see if there's any key questions that need to be answered, you know, any interesting observations, any key details, information. There's no harm in checking, okay? That's what we'll do now, and I'll see if we can answer anything. I think we'll start from the bottom, work our way up. Joseph Lloyd, there's a comment there. Christy, I don't know what that link is to. I won't click on it now because it'll just take me off this video. It might have been to do with uh, one of the news reports or something. Robert says, Marcus Ortiz, rest in peace. Let's hope he wasn't done in by bad guys bearing fentanyl meth. So you might be wondering who's Marcos Ortiz. I can't remember exact, his exact position, but he was within one of the news channels, okay? He was that guy that had that little moustache, you remember? And Candice Cooley did um, respect him and he seemed to cover the case well when, when he had to, but he ended up passing away in 2022, I believe. I can't remember what caused it, whether it was natural or not, but people have created conspiracies with time saying that, oh, someone silenced him or something. And I don't quite understand because there are other people out there that have covered this case and they have talked about and covered more controversial things. And they're not in a higher position like Mark Ortiz was. Like, do you know, you get some YouTubers, people might even be physically going on the land. Okay, <clears throat> they've got threatened here and now, they might have received a bit of resistance, but they weren't killed. So why would Marcus Ortiz? Is it because he's more of a public figure, he stands out more, but I've not really seen him cause any trouble. So, most likely just conspiracies, okay, unless it can be proved. Then we've got someone called Mad Mabel, saying, I'm so pissed that I can't comment in the live streams, I'll be a good girl, Rafi. Girl, let her rip. Right, so basically, this account, what we've got here, reality is, it's a fake account. It's one of those dodgy ones, right? Let's have a brief look at it anyway. Yeah, you can tell it's a fake account. What else have I just said? Call me Super Flaps. Okay, good for you. Let's see when the account was created. 2022, they eat ass. Good for you. Anyway, the pattern, the trend, what you got to understand is when it comes to the fake accounts... Majority of them were set up in 2022. That's the trend, okay? All the fake accounts, what we've seen, 2022, 2020, 2022, right? So just be on the lookout for that. Who is in control of this account? Who knows? But in terms of the response rate from certain individuals, whether it be Weedleby, maybe Stoney, maybe Bella V, I assume that they know this individual or have an idea who it could be. If I had to guess on the spot, could it be Jim Terry? Maybe, you never know. <clears throat> now you might be wondering, how, why, why do you think that? Just simply because when it's come to live streams, call-ins, if they didn't want Jim on, he ended up creating an alt account, an alt username, using a female profile picture, and then getting on, and then surprising everyone and saying, it's me. So that could be a reoccurrence here, what we're seeing but you never know. This sort of 
behaviour isn't new to me. I have extensively seen this in the past, okay? In the past, it, it was um, an individual had a profile picture of a fat female. It had a rainbow flag and then they were talking cryptic and they were suppose like revealing locations and trying to be all you know spooky so could it have transitioned on could it be the same person could it be the same obsession grudge you never know or it could just be a new human messing around of a particular person because you got to look at how other people respond because look at it like this right you get these new accounts coming in or these people just suddenly appearing for the first time you might not know who that individual is because there's no details, there's no information on it, but just observe how the other viewers interact with that one account, okay? If they're all friendly and all nice, oh, hi, hi, you can clearly see there is something going on behind the scenes, but they do know one another. They are associated or acquaintances. You get what I'm saying? That's what you got to look at. Like, even when that not-for-you account showed up and we're like well, who's this? Never heard of before. Don't even know who they are. And yet some of the Salty Pancakes viewers were really interacting with that individual. Like, they knew him fairly well. So just be on the lookout for that type of behaviour, okay? There's no harm in doing that. Let's move on. What does Joseph say? Wow, there was a lot of rats. Don't you just love it? How the Not For You, also known as Wadsworths and the Salty Crew rats, came over and beat up people in the chat. And everybody wonders why rats, Wadsworths, are seen as being so dirty rats. The truth will come out, always does. Awesome show today. Well, this is the thing, Joseph. I wouldn't say anyone was truly beaten up in the chat. The only time when that occurs is when I crack that whip, okay? In addition, as for the drama last night, it wasn't even like just the people in the chat. It was an internal conflict, but on a different pla uh, on a different environment, in a different environment, I should say. Fuck me. So basically, it seemed to be between Stony and some of the um, viewers, like maybe Mini Me, maybe a bit of American Honey, maybe a bit of Not For You, that person showed up secretly, and maybe some other bits and bobs in between. But technically, Stony is a part of the Salty Pancakes channel as well. She's a hybrid. You know, she... Go like supports each one and you know watches each other's videos, which is good of her. So because you've got pancake members arguing between one another, that shows a lack of stability, right? You think about it. You put aside all the potential rats, mice, and people. Just put them aside, and you just basic off a small sample size of people that mainly just watch my videos. Zero percent drama, 0% argumentations, 0% falling out, 0% tension, 0% conflict. That's a fact. That is actually a fact. It's cleansed. It's it's more clean than bleach, right? It's weird, right? It really is. And then some people can say, yeah, are you really sure about that recently? Yeah, but they're not like origins of people from my channel. I'm talking about origins, deep-rooted individuals that appeared on this channel, whether it be Dylan Brown's case or before that. And ever since, as the people have collected and appeared, there's just not really been any tension or arguments. And yet there's been many differings of opinions, and yet it's not caused any issues. So it might mean that certain types of people that associate themselves with certain channels who develop attitude problems or already have attitude problems, then they merge in with other people and that's where the problem's at. But if from the get-go you've got people that can think for themselves but also maintain a form of balance and simply understand it from other perspectives, as seen here, a lot different, right? Big observation to acknowledge there. Make sure you take notes. Glender, Rafe News, hello, gorgeous. I don't know why I said that in that voice. I don't know why I keep doing these fucking random southern accents out of nowhere. Mad Marvel, don't start with me, Rafi. I hate that you're a cutie pie. Okay. So we're seeing some uh, dodgy behaviour. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in time. It's going to turn into like some auction house. You know, you got all these cats 
in the audience. Ba ba da ba da two two three four five six six seven. Who wants raft? Da, da, da. I mean, oh my god, I don't know how that's gonna go. Right, mummer down under. Once again, my comment answering a question you asked in yesterday's video has been removed, deleted, so it's definitely not random. Let's see if this one stays up. Probably will, because I ain't giving information on Dylan's case or correcting statements made. What was your comment that got deleted? Okay. So, once again, your comment's deleted, and once again, I repeat to you down under that YouTube is very dodgy. You look at Kongzilla, one of the key members on my channel, a member, and yet they were unsubbed. And they eventually returned, and they were like, what the hell's going on? This is what YouTube does. It's not always intentional. Very random things can happen. Let me put this into perspective, mummy down under. When I did one of the crime videos to do with inappropriate behaviour towards younger people, that coverage with Montello and some of the people there. My, uh, my video received restrictions down to YouTube because, you know, of sensitive topics and blacklisted keywords, right, which aren't uh, friendly towards YouTube, right? Then I upload another video which is focused on that stuff even more and it wasn't restricted. Then, you've got a video on YouTube of two bees, one on top of another, and that's restricted, classified as too sexual for YouTube, and it's restricted. But then there's another video here of me um, playing a game or something, and it's very gory and uh, a, bit, a bit aggressive and stuff, and yet, that's perfectly fine. So it's very random at times, that's what you've got to understand, mumma down under, try and brush away that impetuism, brush away the egocentrism, and then you, you'll understand the concept. Indiana 59, loose in pond, could it be possible that Dylan owned two phones? I don't know. Does anyone else agree with that point by Indiana? Possibility? I know I've heard about the burner phone, a second phone for the suspect or suspects, right? But that kind of died off with time, not been brought up since. Kentucky Bluebirds, hello, hello. Shout out to Kentucky. Pack and go with Tara. Oh, Tara. Tara, stick with that username. It's a lot shorter and easier to read. Mm -hmm. She says, I just watched the Idaho interview and I heard Justin breathe out a few times like he is holding back words. When Candice Cooley keeps talking, poor man, he just can't take the lead for Dylan. The story has changed again. You are correct, Ref. She left Heavy D drone footage and search. Amazing she hasn't been asked by Ellie to take a lie detector test and she isn't under an investigation yet. He responded, Joseph, of course. Joseph saying, lol, I assume because Joseph thinks it's a load of rubbish. But the way I see it, true observation, uh, it did seem like Justin was heavy breathing a lot. I, w I wasn't sure what the noise exactly was. I kept hearing, <sighs> well, that's probably a bit too intense. That. That's probably the noise Bella V would make or Stony. But that's not the point. You could hear some kind of breathing and it did sound like it was from Justin. Now, it could be for numerous reasons, of course, right? I've never heard it before then. Maybe the camera, the microphone was closer to them this time, so it picked up background sound. Or maybe just maybe Justin was holding something in, like maybe a bit of frustration or certain information which cannot be released at this moment in time. Like how Candice Cooley said at the beginning of the interview, maybe Justin... Is finding it a little bit difficult to hold it back. Could be a possibility. Smooth fishing. With my son's case, the news told me told more lies than the guilty people. They said stuff wasn't true and even made up stuff. Since then, I've never watched any news channel because they're nothing but liars. They will say anything just to get views. So I said that. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell it's messed up if guilty people are being more truthful than the, the news channels. But I know some people will say, well, what do you expect? News channels, they are the way they are. Mm. Is that it? Any responses? Raf, Johnny Yarborough has a live stream show on tonight with a QA and a with Ty Corbin, 6pm Pacific time. Should be really interesting. Maybe that's already underway right now or it's already finished. Just thinking of time zone difference, right? UK time zone. But, uh, yeah, 
I mean, like, this is the thing. There's a few people along the way which have showed up characters, good and bad, and, like, are they all associated with Dylan Rounds or did they just randomly pop in once and then move on elsewhere and then the channels grew like that? Maybe. Because a lot of people that you may know of, but they don't really associate themselves with Dylan Rounds, well, do they? Hmm. How many people truly acknowledge that their roots, that their... Um, foundations originated from Dylan Rounds. Not many, really no one, right? Really no one acknowledges that. I mean, as for me, mine's because of Kenny Veach and M Cave, and then it's grown from there. I've covered more than one case since, which is a positive. Shows that there is a form of stability, a form of consistency, right? It wasn't just a one-off. So that's all good. It's good for the people, you know, especially the ones that continue to watch all good. So yeah, I think that's just it for the comments. Nothing too groundbreaking, but I just thought it was worth sharing. So I think what I'll do now, I'll leave it there. You can give your thoughts, opinions on, you know, the visual aspect before and after of this coverage of the pond. What do you think? Do you think it was successful regardless? Do you think they did find something, but they're not telling anyone? And so on and so on. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and good night for now.